Hey gang, Steve here. One thing I get asked a lot is how to use one of these pencil and razor blade diodes in place of the germanium diode in my homemade crystal radio. So I'll show you how to do that. What you'll be making is something like this. Now this is a razor blade right here, and part of the razor blade has been blued. It has a coating of iron oxide on it, and I'll show you how to do that. Right here is a pencil, and we can move this pencil around so that the tip of the pencil touches the blued part of the razor blade in different places. And I've simply got some way of hooking up the uh, lead for the pencil to the rest of the circuit here. To blue the razor I use my propane torch. I got my results with something that was actually more gray than blue. I then used a thumbtack to fix the blade to a piece of wood, leaving the unblued portion hanging off. I also cut a piece of pencil short and pushed the sharp point of a clothespin into the pencil lead, which is actually made of graphite. Make sure you push the pin into the graphite itself, not the wood. The next step was to replace the germanium diode with the new pencil and razor blade diode. So there's my homemade crystal radio and it's connected up normally. There's my uh, crystal earpiece right there, also homemade. And right here is a germanium diode that I want to stop using. So I'll take it out of the circuit. And uh, Just disconnecting one end is good enough to remove it from the circuit. Um, these are the wires going to the coil and up to the capacitor. I'll take that uh, wire and instead I'll connect it to the razor blade diode right here. Notice I'm connecting it to the bare end, the part that's not connected, that's not blued at all. Now to connect the other end of the diode and circuit, I'll connect to the, again, to the coil and capacitor. Remember, this diode is not in circuit anymore. I'll take the other end of that wire and connect it to the pencil. So it's ready to test. The testing is actually quite difficult because I have a number of things to adjust. I have the variable capacitor here, I have the variable coil right here, and then I have the number of places that I could touch the blued razor blade right here. So it uh, <laughs> takes a lot of fiddling around. So I'll put in the earpiece. I find I get best results right around here somewhere. So what I've done is I've taken my clothespin right here and I've straightened it out a bit so that I can get this going down at a sharper angle. And I'll uh, put a thumbtack so it sticks in right there. Okay, one last modification I made was to put this staple here. <laughs> that way when I move these wires around doesn't affect the placement of this right here. And I've managed to tune everything now so that I actually have it. Unfortunately it's a little too quiet. I'll put it the, um, the earpiece in the camera microphone but you won't hear it. So I'm sure you didn't hear that. What I'll do instead is I'll hook up my amplifier. So here's my amplifier from my how to make an amplifier for a crystal earphone video. I'll just connect it in place here. Nice and loud. Okay, here you go. I'll bring the camera in closer so you can hear it in the earpiece. But don't be misled by this short video. It took a lot of effort to get it working and it's very finicky. So if you're doing this because you're having trouble finding germanium diodes, then I suggest you try searching a little harder. But if you're doing this for an interesting challenge, then go for it. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this helps. Check out my YouTube channel, Rimstar.org, for more videos like this. That includes one where I show how to make this crystal radio, also one on how to make the amplifier for the earphone which I use in this video, and a very detailed one on how a crystal radio works. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up, or leave a question, or comment below. Bye for now!